Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. This is going to be episode 9 and today we have returned from the nether where we were in the previous episode and we're going to get started on potion brewing. Potion brewing along with enchanting is one of the more magical elements of Minecraft and today I'm going to show you a little bit about how we can use potion brewing to our advantage now that we are in the stage of the game where we have access to the nether and we need to go back there to acquire even more resources. So I'm going to use this little area over here of our house that we kind of sectioned off with these wooden beams in the floor. See over here we have the makings of our enchanting setup and over here we're going to have potions. Now there's going to be a couple of things that we can already set up here. We want a chest so that we can store some of the potion brewing ingredients. We also need to grab, let's grab like an oak stair or something like that so we can have like a little desk of sorts over here underneath the window. I think that's going to look quite nice. And now we need to make ourselves a potion brewing stand. Luckily we acquired two blaze rods while we were in the nether last time and we will use one of these to create a potion brewing stand along with three blocks of cobblestone. And if we go into our crafting table, in fact I might make a crafting table up here because I don't want to have to keep going downstairs for my stuff every time. Let's see if we've got, we have got some logs in here, very cool. I'll grab a couple of those, I had a couple in my inventory anyway, but we can turn more oak planks into another crafting table and you'll find that you'll end up making crafting tables all over the place. You don't have to stick to just using one of them. With that, we're going to put three cobblestone across the bottom there and one blaze rod on top like that and that makes you a brewing stand. And we can pop that on the table right there. Now, as you'll see, the potion brewing stand is kind of empty right now and if you click on it, you right click on it with the mouse button, you will end up with a an inventory screen that looks a little bit like this. This is the potion brewing stand GUI and this has space for three potions, some blaze powder up there which will be the fuel for the potion brewing stand and this little slot up here for the ingredients. Now I need to go and grab myself some glass. I don't believe we have any glass left over from when we created the house and I don't have any sand to cook or anything like that so let's go out and grab a little bit more sand. And I think we might go a little bit further afield than this lake even though there's plenty of sand in the lake because I want to explore the world around us a little bit more. I want to see what other biomes are out there. So we're going to do a little bit more exploring and stuff as well. Plenty of sand around here if you want to get it at short notice though. Let's go and take a look at what we've got around us. We'll see if there's a desert or a beach that we could grab some sand from. Previously we've been over here to take a look at the swamp in the distance. Let's see what's out in this direction. And as always we're taking note of what time of day it is just in case we need to quickly run back to the house. I have been doing a bit of tree farming over here so I know there's a forest here but I'm interested in what's beyond the forest. <laughs> What is beyond these pigs? I will I will find out today, hopefully. So let's take a quick look around. It looks like the swamp biome actually stretches pretty far over here. On this side, we have a sunflower plains. So that's pretty interesting. You, you only ever find sunflowers growing in specific variants on the plains biome. So you find yourself in a sunflower plains. You will spot a whole bunch of these. And it looks like the swamp actually curves around us on this side and takes up this whole area here. Fantastic stuff. All right. Well, we can always grab a little bit of sand from here. I suppose there is also clay down here, which we will not need right now, but there is uh, a possibility that that will come in useful later. There are even some squids playing in the river because squid now only spawn in river biomes, as I covered a couple of episodes ago. So I'll grab a little bit of ink while we have the chance to. And I think I will actually grab some sand from the bottom of this lake or this river here. So you'll notice it's actually harder to grab blocks when you're underwater. And that is because we don't have the aqua affinity enchantment on our gear yet. The only way of being able to harvest blocks at the same speed underwater as you do on land is with aqua affinity, which is an enchantment we could get from our enchanting table at some point. But right now we're just going to have to put up with being able to mine blocks a little bit slower than usual. But that's fine, we only need to gather a little bit of sand. In fact, 12 sand should be an ideal amount. We need sand uh, for glass in groups of three because three glass blocks is what makes a bunch of glass bottles in Minecraft. So uh, we may as well gather something in a multiple of three. So we would get four sets of glass bottles out of that. And then we can make our way back down the river over here and we should be able to find ourselves back at the little house that we've set up over here. I'm going to dip under the water quickly so I can swim. The swimming animation in Minecraft is fantastic. It's a uh, a new thing for this most recent update and I am really enjoying it. <laughs> it just looks really nice. You can also swim through one block wide gaps and up we go. 
on the opposite side here, there we are, back at the house. And it's rare that we use the back entrance to our house. So we'll put the sand on to smelt right now. Uh, let's see if we have any fuel in either of these. We don't. Okay, let's go and grab some coal quickly then. I'm pretty sure there is still some coal up here on the mountainside, so we may as well head up and grab that. I might just grab a little bit of the gravel from the side here and use that to pillar up to that cave. Or maybe we can sneak into the cave at this level. Let's see. Let's see what's in here. I haven't really explored this little section all that much because it didn't look like there was a, a huge cave system here, but apparently I was wrong. Apparently there are caves there to explore, so that might be something uh, worth taking a look at. You'll notice that once again, oh, the zombies have come out to find us for some reason. That's okay. That guy's just going to burn in the sunlight unless he takes a prolonged dip in the river. But all we need to do is grab a little bit of this here and we are on our way to having a nice, easy fuel source again. Okay, we've dug all of the coal out from there. We've got 31 coal, which is a pretty decent number. And that zombie has somehow managed to stay in the river that entire time until just then when he burnt up. Well, we'll take the rotten flesh with us. We may as well. May as well put that in our mob drops chest for later. And now we've got enough coal that we can smelt up this sand into glass and make our first glass bottles. Also, while the glass is smelting in the furnace, I'm going to come out the back of the house. It's not going to be a uh, problem that it's becoming nighttime right now. We don't need to worry too much about that. But I think what we're going to do is set up a little potion garden out here with the, uh, the, the soul sand blocks. In fact, I might actually put these in the ground so it feels a little bit more like a garden. So how about here? We'll just do a little uh, three by three patch of the soul sand like so and we will grow nether wart. And nether wart is like any other crop in Minecraft. Uh, once it grows to full size and you harvest it, you actually get more nether wart back and then you can replant those and you can keep growing them. So as long as you have one nether wart left, you should be able to regrow it until you have a whole bunch waiting for you. But the rest of it, I'm going to put in this chest here and then we can gather up the other things we need to brew some potions. Now, now we've got uh, nine glass fully smelted in here. I can take that out and I'm getting a little bit impatient to start potion brewing, so we may as well give this a go now. You'll see the uh, glass bottle recipe in our crafting recipe book there, but all you need to do is place three glass like that in a kind of V shape, and you get yourself three glass bottles. So it's a one for one kind of process. The other thing we need here is a water source because you need to fill up the glass bottles from a water source. And I'm gonna do a neat little trick with this where we can make, aha, we've got a trap door here already. We're going to make a little water source over here by the potion brewing stand. Let's put it there, shall we? I'm gonna put a trap door in front of this block here, going to fold it upwards like that. And then we can put the water bucket in there and the trap door will actually hold the water in place. Now, if you open the trap door, it's uh, still gonna stay there. So it doesn't kind of flow out from this trap door or anything like that. And we're going to use that as the water source for brewing up our potions like so. We can drop a few water bottles in there, just right click on them to fill them up with water, and then we drop them into the brewing stand. Now the next thing they need is fuel, and for that we actually have to craft this blaze rod into blaze powder, simply by putting it in our inventory and breaking it down into two blaze powder like so. And blaze powder is used in a number of recipes. It is used for brewing potions, and it's also used to create eyes of ender. But if we put it in the brewing stand like so. You'll see it disappears and it fills up this little gauge here which shows quite how how much brewing capacity you have left in this brewing stand. So uh, that will now do I think about 10 uh, brewing operations, 10 different ingredients can be added before you need to add another blaze powder in. So for now we should be okay with that. The first ingredient you want to add to basically any potion, with only a couple of exceptions, I think, is a nether wart, and it will transform this regular water bottle with no effects into an awkward potion, which also has no effects, but it's the basis of all of the other potions you make in Minecraft. While that's brewing, I'm going to turn the rest of the glass here into glass bottles, and you'll hear that glug 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 sound when it's done brewing. So as you can see, this is now an awkward potion with no effects. Now, there are a bunch of different potion brewing recipes in Minecraft, and for a full guide on this, I recommend looking up the Minecraft wiki, which has a fantastic diagram that will show you exactly what potion ingredients are required to brew each type of potion in the game. But today, as a very specific example, I'm going to be making a potion of fire resistance. Now that requires magma cream, and you might be wondering, but we didn't get any magma cream while we were in the nether. I said that you can get it from magma cubes, but it isn't possible to get it all the time. If, especially if you fight the smaller ones, they don't really drop magma cream all that much. So how are we going to get our hands on magma cream? Well, 
there is a crafting recipe for magma cream that means if you combine blaze powder and a slime ball, you can get yourself a magma cream just by combining them in a crafting interface like so. And that's a very handy recipe to remember if you weren't able to grab enough magma cream from magma cubes while you were in the nether, because they're quite difficult to come across. You don't always see them all of the time. By putting a magma cream in here and waiting for it to brew up, this awkward potion is going to turn into something very, very useful. And that is a potion of fire resistance. This will allow you to walk in lava, to be hit by blaze fireballs, to be set on fire, and you will not take any damage. Right now, as you can see, it lasts for three minutes. So as long as you have drunk one of these potions beforehand, it does consume the potion, so you won't be able to drink it a second time. You can't sip from the bottle or anything like that, but it will allow you to be protected from any kind of fire damage. That is vital for exploring the nether, especially in the early stages of the game, because there is so much stuff in the nether, as you saw in the last episode, that can set you on fire. It's really important to have that. However, Three minutes is not the longest duration that this potion can last for. If we grab some redstone out of here and add this to the potion, it will actually last for eight minutes, which is the maximum duration of any potion as far as I know. And that's going to allow you to survive in the nether with three of these potions. Notice that it adds the effect to all three of the potions in the brewing stand at once. That will allow you to survive for 24 minutes on fire <laughs> if you need to. So that is going to be absolutely ideal. And look, we got an advancement for that as well. That is going to be absolutely ideal for exploring the nether when we go back in future episodes. And I'm going to pop the potions in here for now. We're going to top up a few more potions at this water source. We're going to put them by shift clicking into the brewing stand and we'll be ready to brew up another set of potions if we want to. Potions unlock a huge variety of effects in Minecraft. Everything from being able to jump higher to having night vision to being able to breathe underwater for long periods of time. And there are even negative potion effects. For example, you can brew a potion of poison or a potion of weakness or a potion of slowness. These obviously aren't effects that you want to apply to yourself, but they might be useful when applied to monsters and can definitely be useful in a player versus player combat environment if you're throwing them at other players. Now you might wonder how you can apply potion effects to other players when with potions like this you have to actually physically drink them as though you were eating some food. Now you can make splash potions in order to do that and I can probably show you a quick example of that now if I brew up another set of awkward potions using this nether wart and let's see what other potions would we like to make. I can think of a good example, and to do that, we're gonna go out here to our little sugarcane farm, which has been growing merrily, and I've been adding a couple more uh, sugar canes to the surrounding area so we can grow a little bit more. Let's grab some of this. Let's replant a couple as we go, and maybe take out this block of gravel so that we can plant one there as well. Fantastic stuff. Now, sugarcane isn't just useful for making paper. As the name suggests, you can turn it into sugar. And sugar can be used in potions to brew a swiftness potion. So we'll pop the sugar in there. That's going to brew into a swiftness potion. Now, to make it into a splash potion, you actually need some gunpowder. And the gunpowder, of course, the only real way to get it is from the two explosive monsters in the game, creepers and ghasts. <laughs> ghasts will occasionally drop gunpowder, although they're a little bit trickier to catch <laughs> in the nether than creepers so you uh, you do want to keep an eye out for gunpowder when they drop it and otherwise you'll be fighting creepers for this stuff. Now, this has turned into a three minute potion of swiftness. We can increase the duration of the effect once again by adding redstone dust. There is also a glowstone effect. If we ended up smashing any of the glowstone from the nether, it would drop as glowstone dust. We actually didn't collect any in the last episode, so I might have to go back for that at some point but that would actually increase the potency of the potion. It would actually make it a potion of swiftness too, which might allow you to run even faster. But in this case, uh, you can either add the increased duration or you can add the increased potency. So you can't have both redstone and glowstone. You can have an eight minute potion of swiftness too. It's either one or the other, but both of those can have gunpowder attached to them and then the potion transforms into a splash potion of swiftness, which means the duration decreases a little bit, but it allows you to just right click to throw it on the ground 
and splash anything and everything around you, including yourself if you're not careful. But obviously in the case of a potion of swiftness, we are interested in applying that speed to ourselves. So once we've put away some of our more valuable things that we gathered from that last session in the nether, I think maybe we should go back and try and acquire some of that glowstone that I missed in the last episode. And we'll take a potion of fire resistance and a splash potion of swiftness with us and we'll see how we do. I've also taken a quick sleep to make sure it's daytime before we go to the nether because one of the other things I didn't cover is that time will still pass in the overworld while you're visiting the nether. So if you go there and it's uh, daytime and you spend more than a, a, about 10 minutes in the nether, you come back out, it will probably be nighttime. And so to that end, it is probably a worthwhile thing to light up the area around your portal, especially if you don't have a, uh, a portal inside your house, inside a safe area. You will want to make sure that you have a safe route back from the portal to somewhere you can sleep to skip the night. Otherwise, you will end up being kind of surrounded by monsters without uh, if you're not too careful. So let's quickly eat a steak. Let's step back into the nether portal and let's see if we can grab ourselves some glowstone. Here we are again, back in the dangerous, dangerous nether, and <laughs> right here in the ceiling, as you can see, we have ourselves a huge patch of glowstone, which is going to be perfect for the gathering. So let's see, I didn't bring any blocks with me this time other than the wood, and I kind of want to keep that for supplies if we want to make torches and things like that. So let's quickly make a little staircase out of this nether rack, hop up here, and we'll ignore the zombie pigmen as always, and we're going to break the glowstone with whatever tools we have to hand right now, and it will break in into glowstone dust. Now once you've broken down a little bit of glowstone, you will get a certain amount of glowstone dust back, and that can be converted back into glowstone blocks in a 2x2 crafting interface there. Although these will not always drop four glowstone dust each time. You'll notice that one I think only dropped a couple, so you will actually need to harvest a whole bunch of this, or alternatively get yourself the silk touch enchantment on a pickaxe or another tool that you're using to break the glowstone, and that will drop the whole glowstone block without breaking it down into dust. You can also have the fortune enchantment on your tool, and that will encourage the glowstone to drop more glowstone dust, meaning that you'll have a better chance of crafting it all back into full glowstone blocks afterwards and, and losing as little as possible. So we're not going to take down the entirety of this little cluster of glowstone here because there's every chance that we'll be able to come back with a silk touch or a fortune tool and get the most out of it. One of the other things we're going to pick up while we're here in the nether is some quartz, which we noticed there was a fair amount of around the entrance to our portal here. So I may as well grab some of this while we're here. Quartz is not only a useful resource and once again can be harvested a little bit more efficiently. If you have fortune, you'll be able to get more than one uh, nether quartz piece out of it, much the same way as you get more than one diamond out of diamond ore if you have the fortune enchantment. But it's also going to provide a huge amount of experience points. Uh, more so than any other overworld ore, except for maybe diamonds, which don't occur in nearly as much quantity as quartz does here in the nether. And so by grabbing this, we are actually able to level up quite quickly. And as you can see, I'm already up to 25 levels. You'll notice big patches of quartz all around us in the nether. And this is a really great way of getting to level 30 and taking advantage of those level 30 enchantments back at the enchanting table. Now much as these, whoa, okay, there's a uh, there's a ghast out there somewhere. There he is, hello. Let's see if we can bat the fireball back at him again. Oh, not quite, not quite, go on, go on. Haha, <laughs> we got him, we got him in the end. Okay, well much as I do not want to waste the potions that I've got, oh, fantastic, we got ourselves a ghast tear from that. See, it's always best to investigate the spot just below where a ghast got killed because you might grab yourself fantastic resources like that. The ghast tier is used to brew another potion, which is a potion of regeneration. Instead of just healing you up a huge amount at a time, potions of regeneration apply a regeneration effect which heals you slowly over time which can be very useful to counteract effects like poison or the wither effect that I mentioned in the last episode. So much as I do not want to waste the potion of swiftness and the potion of fire resistance, I think it's also kind of going to be fun to test them out for you guys. So I'm going to find a safe way to get down to this lava lake over here, which it looks like we should be able to. And I'm also going to use the empty bucket I've got to grab myself a bucket of lava from right here in the nether. So let's see if we can hop down the side here. I think we should be okay there. 
there, this looks like a fairly safe way to get back up. In fact, let me quickly craft a couple of torches as long as there are no ghasts around shooting at me. Let's make a few torches and let's apply a couple of torches to the side of this just so we can be sure that that is the way we need to travel back up here. There we go, fantastic. Let's make our way down to the shores of this lava lake. Now, obviously lava is very dangerous and <laughs> you don't want to be spending too much around it. You will also find these magma blocks around the edges of it, which if you step on them, you end up taking a little bit of damage. Not as much as you would if you fell in lava, but you do get your toes burned a little bit, so we don't want that. However, if I now take one of these potions of fire resistance, like so, and it is even possible to take one once you fall into a lava lake, you'll notice these potion particles start drifting off of me. There is a potion effect indicator in the top right hand corner, that kind of fireball looking thing up there. And if you close the recipe book, you will also see here a potions display where it tells you what effects you have and for how long. Now, likewise, if I add the splash potion of swiftness, spot how fast I'm walking around right now. If I throw that on the ground, I can walk around a little faster and I can even sprint super fast. So that's going to be very useful for getting away from stuff if you need to. Now that I uh, have the fire resistance effect, I can walk around on the magma blocks without having to worry about them hurting me. I can even drop myself into the lava and go for a bit of a swim if I want to. Look at me, <laughs> swimming around in the lava. Now, Lava works like water. You cannot just jump off the surface of it. You do need to hold down the jump button in order to get out of it. And that is very useful if you're stuck in lava at any point. Now, normally with magma blocks, you can also hold down the crouch button to walk across them as if you're kind of tiptoeing over them and you won't take any damage. And uh, there's also an enchantment for boots called Frostwalker that enables you to walk over magma blocks without taking any damage. But fire resistance potions just allow you to run around on top of it however you like without taking any damage whatsoever. So they're pretty useful. And as you'll see, having dropped myself in lava and been on fire for a significant amount of time there, that's an amount of time that probably would have killed me if I had been uh, standing around and not, you know, eating or healing myself in any other way, then uh, I've taken no damage whatsoever because I had the fire resistance effect on. So that is absolutely perfect. We've even managed to gather ourselves a bunch of magma blocks and I can walk down into this lava lake, scoop off a bucket of lava from anywhere I want to, and I got the, the hot stuff advancement for that. And there we go, we have ourselves a bucket of lava acquired from within a lava lake in the nether and not a scratch on me. I think that's pretty great, folks, don't you? I feel like that's kind of essential for survival in the nether, especially considering that if you dig into the walls of the nether, it is possible to come across a single source block of lava inside of any of the walls. So if you dig for long enough inside one of these, you will start to find lava pockets here and there, and you don't know where those are going to be. So having a potion of fire resistance on you in the nether is going to be very, very useful in the long run. Look at that, first try, haha, <laughs> brilliant. Sadly, the ghast here might have dropped into lava at that point, so we won't be able to go and grab that, but no worries. I think it's probably time to head back to the overworld with our newfound riches and wrap up this episode. Here we are back in the overworld, and as you can see, the sun is now going down on the opposite side of the sky, so it is, uh, it is very important to keep track of time as you head through the nether. Right, that's going to be it for this episode, folks. We're going to drop our ghast tier in the potion brewing chest. We're going to put the glowstone in there as well. And I hope this has been an interesting introduction to potions for you guys. Like I said, do go and check out the Minecraft wiki because that is the perfect place to find all of the potion brewing recipes. We will cover a few of them in future episodes, I'm sure, but that's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care, bye for now.